collection of greenhouse data. And then we'll move right into the presentation, which will be given by Thomas Burns, who is a VP and one of our founding members. Greenhouse Data is headquartered in Cheyenne, Wyoming. We're a VMware vCloud Power Partner. We have facilities in Cheyenne, Portland, and Newark, New Jersey. We're both wind and solar powered. We're HIPAA and SSAE 16 Type 2 compliant. And we offer 24 by 7 live customer support. So with that, I'm just going to turn it over to Thomas. Thanks, Wendy. I appreciate the introduction. And give me uh, just one second, and I will go live. Uh, so today we are going to talk about lower cost and speed recovery time with cloud uh, disaster recovery. Uh, just to add a little bit to what uh, Wendy introduced us, how Wendy introduced us about greenhouse data. We have been building custom cloud and co-location solutions since 2007. So essentially, before the, the marketing buzz or bomb for quote unquote cloud uh, uh, actually appeared, we have been providing these types of services to our clients. Uh, and so our tenure there is very long and that's very much an area of our expertise. We are, are leading the data center industry in sustainable methodologies. Our model is if we can reduce uh, electricity costs uh, by implementing technologies that uh, reduce that type of usage in our uh, data center uh, floor space and our uh, HVAC systems, our, uh, our infrastructure deployments in general, we can pass those cost savings onto our client and also be uh, a more socially responsible data center company. Um, we were one of the first VMware powered providers uh, in the country. Uh, VMware was very much part of our initial deployment as a company. Uh, our model is very high touch. Uh, we tend to want to take care of customers, understanding what they're, not only what their technical needs and expertise is, but what uh, their business drivers are so we can provide better service to them as a company and a partner. Uh, we are powered by 100% renewable energy through uh, both uh, wind energy uh, and solar energy. Uh, we provide an enterprise class infrastructure, so our focus is uh, high-end enterprise infrastructure. Our engineers are certified in everything from VMware, Microsoft, Linux, um, databases, um, pretty much you name it, the core enterprise uh, level softwares and applications, that is where our focus is. Very process and procedure driven, uh, SAS, uh, well not SAS 70, SSA 16 now, uh, and HIPAA compliant and a very customer-centric approach, 24, hour, 24 by 7, 365 days a year, uh, support and access to engineers. So there's been a pretty big shift in uh, technology, obviously, which has uh, enabled a lot more companies to develop DR plans that actually meet their needs and cost less. Uh, and obviously that uh, shift has been around the hypervisor and cloud infrastructure uh, style deployments. And so we'll talk a little bit about the new school here. The old school, traditional disaster recovery, and this graph uh, basically as uh, you move upward in the, in the graph, uh, that is how uh, it goes, to, your time shortens for a DR recovery. So as that arrow moves upwards, our time comes down, but as you can see, time and cost are distinctly related. Uh, in the old schools specifically, you know, everything from you know, tape backup may take days to recover from. So um, and, and off-site tape backup, uh, you, you may get a, a little bit quicker, but the, the time or the cost goes up. Um, online backup, which is still you know, a technology that uh, we embrace uh, very much, uh, it was considerably more expensive than tape because you were usually talking about disk. Uh, and then we had things like cold site disaster recovery where we may have a, a co-location facility that housed uh, infrastructure, storage, servers, uh, it was networked, but basically there was no data there, so we still had to get the data there. Uh, warm site disaster recovery, uh, the, the data is there, uh, the infrastructure is there, but it's just not live. Um, 
And then hot site disaster recovery, very, very, very expensive. And the old way of doing things just because of our, not only the operational expenditures, but the capital cost uh, specifically, really drove uh, that cost up. And we'll talk uh, directly to the new school of warm site, hot site uh, recovery models. So the cloud effect not only has enabled us to recover from a disaster much more quickly, the cost has come down significantly. And so we're going to talk uh, uh, directly to warm site disaster recovery models as well as hot site disaster recovery models. So some of the, the drivers for cloud computing um, uh, at enterprise level um, organizations uh, has been around basically I want to do more with less. I want to spend less. I don't want to build data centers anymore. I don't want to maintain multiple sites. I don't want to have double my CapEx for every deployment I need. Uh, and then specifically, you know, I think this uh, report is, you know, a couple of years old. Um, and at that point in time, I think 40% of the respondents uh, said disaster recovery and business continuity uh, was a focus on uh, cloud infrastructure. I think that number is probably a lot higher now. 50 or 60 percent uh, are focusing there for their uh, their ER deployments. Warm site recovery. So again, this is um, a has a little longer RPO and RTO. And here are some. I'm just going to walk through a just a basic scenario of what a warm site recovery would look like. So disaster occurs. Hopefully it's not a nuclear explosion, but uh, some level of shutdown of the primary site as uh, that event has taken place. So in a warm site recovery, one example of how to recover from that would be accessing a uh, infrastructure as a service cloud, also known as a virtual data center. A virtual data center um, functions and operates exactly like a physical data center would. We can build servers, virtual machines, and deploy them. We can load operating systems. Uh, we can load data. Um, we, can, we can network it. Uh, we can add firewalls and control functions, access rules, uh, so that those who need to access this information can. Um, and uh, it, it's a generally an environment that um, allows us to do from a web page what we used to have to do from our, uh, our internal network. So from that virtual data center environment, we would create a baseline server. And in some cases, we may have a uh, baseline server or a template uh, or an image of that uh, server stored in a catalog. We may have it already pre-built, residing in that environment that we basically just have to turn on and add uh, data to. And speaking of the data, part of the warm site model is that we have to have uh, that data being replicated. And again, we, there is a lot of different tools that we use for replicating data, but we have to have that data moving from the primary site to the disaster site uh, and stored there so that we can load it to our disaster recovery template or image where we need it. And depending on you know, the, the nature of that data, um, it may take uh, minutes, it may take hours, uh, but usually would not take more than you know a single day, depending on network speeds and the size of the data. Make necessary network changes. So we have to tell the, the system that this is now the primary system. The primary system that is no longer there uh, is uh, the IP, the DNS, uh, needs to be removed, and this needs to be the primary site. Uh, so there is a, a DNS change that takes place. And in a warm site, uh, it's going to be manual. Uh, we're going to have to make those changes ourselves. There are, there's technology and there's also process uh, and setup that you can do on your primary systems uh, so that this, this DNS change uh, and this network update happens relatively quickly, within you know, an hour. So we have uh, accessed our web-based uh, virtual data center, built our virtual machines, added our applications, uh, loaded the OSs. Uh, we've up, uh, loaded the, uh, the backup data to this system, we changed the network configuration, so now our, our recovery is complete. The 
the only aspect of that is it took time. So there is, because we're doing much of this manually, uh, the data is there. Um, the, we have to build the virtual machine sort of from the ground up, pull a template up. Um, the, the time can be, you know, longer. Uh, the cost, though, is considerably lower. This, um, this model can utilize a public cloud infrastructure as a service. Public cloud infrastructure as a service is, is cheaper because cost for the actual hardware is distributed amongst many. Um, we can also use private cloud as well, but generally speaking, public cloud is ideal because the cost is less. Uh, again, it requires, it only really requires storage for your virtual machine templates and your, um, your recovery data. So you're really only, in this case, you're really only paying for some level of data storage. Uh, the recovery is manual. This is ideal for non uh, critical systems, pre-disaster, low cost. You're only paying for storage. Post-disaster, that's where your costs actually kick in. You have to utilize uh, compute resources, CPU, RAM, uh, and bandwidth utilization. Uh, all of those costs are going to go up if you have to recover from disaster. Otherwise, they're zero. So we'll talk about a couple of uh, warm site technologies that Greenhouse Data uses to implement uh, these types of solutions for our clients. Start with vSphere. Uh, vSphere, obviously, we are a huge proponent of VMware services uh, and VMware uh, hypervisors. Their latest version of uh, vSphere 5.1 includes replication service. And what that means is that I can take my primary site location, uh, set up a vSphere instance, set up vSphere replication, point it to another vSphere uh, setup, wherever it might be. It could be uh, in one of our facilities in Cheyenne or in New Jersey or in Portland, uh, and replicate that data over. Uh, so in real time, essentially at block level, uh, I am uh, pushing images of my systems to an off-site location. Uh, because it's a, the off-site location is a vSphere environment as well, I can easily convert those images into live machines, change the network configurations, and then uh, bring them up live with that loaded data in place. The, uh, the cost is relatively low. If you're making the investment in vSphere, which the cost is relatively high, uh, but your replication site is it's built into the software, so it has a very low cost. And you can do a very basic setup, or you can get more complicated as well, but uh, the basic setup is relatively easy. Beam uh, is another great technology that we like to use. The nice thing about uh, Beam is we can create very um, uh, refined RPOs, recovery point objectives. So uh, essentially, how um, quickly are we pushing the primary data to the secondary data site? So uh, we can control those parameters very easily. Um, I really, we really like Beam because it gives the client the ability to have an on-site copy of their, uh, their DR storage as well. Where that comes into play is uh, for quote unquote minor disasters. Uh, someone has uh, deleted a, uh, a, a file directory that they shouldn't have uh, and want to recover it very quickly, uh, and rather having a full DR uh, blowout, we can access those files locally on the uh, local area network, which is much faster than a, a wide area network, obviously, uh, and we, they can recover very quickly from those minor disasters. The building has a blown up, uh, it's still there, human error got involved, we can recover very quickly from that. Uh, and obviously it allows for the offsite where if any major disaster takes place and that building has uh, uh, been shut down, uh, you could be back up and running in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, the licensing on this side is if you do not have to pay for any offsite licenses for Veeam. Uh, they are included on your on-site replication uh, licenses, so there is some cost effectiveness there as well. Avamar. Avamar is uh, one of our favorite uh, technologies. It's an enterprise-level backup technology. Uh, it does 
very granular block level deduplication. And what that basically means is it uh, once the initial backup of all systems has taken place, it only moves or backs up the data that has changed uh, on a binary level, which is uh, very, very efficient. It lowers your cost on bandwidth utilization because you're only pushing very small amounts of data across your network and, uh, and internet network as well. Um, it is a storage-based replication. The, uh, the really nice thing about Avamar, we talk a lot about cloud and infrastructure as a service and virtualization, um, but a lot of people are still using physical server infrastructure and Avamar will support both uh, the uh, cloud and physical server infrastructure uh, as well. Hot site replication. So if you remember from our um, scale that we showed before of the new school disaster recovery models, hot site uh, traditionally was uh, unreachable for most organizations. Uh, it was very, very expensive. Uh, it's absolutely only for uh, mission critical systems uh, and uh, not a lot of people did this type of uh, DR scenario. Now with the uh, enablement of uh, cloud infrastructure, uh, we can do it at a reasonable cost. And so that's basically how um, hot site recovery works is you have your primary infrastructure. In this case, uh, we're representing it very much like a cloud, uh, private cloud infrastructure with our storage, our applications, uh, our virtual machines, uh, and our network. Those systems are directly connected to the internet. They're passing data through the internet, uh, you know, 24 by 7 sometimes, very granular changes. Uh, other maybe we're doing daily backups or hourly backups or hourly data transfer replication to our secondary B site. And it's, it's pretty much as simple as that. Uh, the nature of the uh, cloud infrastructures and we're not having to buy physical servers and buy physical SANs, we can use a uh, and infrastructure as a service rather than uh, making co-location purchases and, or paying co-location providers as well as buying that infrastructure. So very short uh, recovery time, but very, uh, the, the cost does go up. Um, the cost goes up because uh, in many cases we are requiring a private cloud infrastructure as a service. Not all cases, but many cases we have a private uh, cloud infrastructure as a service, which means you do have um, a dedicated environment. It's not a shared environment uh, that costs are uh, distributed amongst men. Um, it does require running CPU, RAM, and bandwidth. So that CPU and RAM is required because there is usually software related to the, the disaster site uh, that is connected to the, the um, primary site on a server level, not on just a storage level. The aspect that a lot of people like is automated recovery. So we can set up milestones and thresholds so that uh, if the system, the secondary system loses contact, uh, for instance, with the primary system for more than four minutes, uh, the system uh, automatically um, starts the procedure for becoming the primary site, uh, re-DNSs itself, uh, re-allocates uh, itself, uh, shuts down the uh, original system, uh, connection and goes live and, and uh, depending on the, the nature of the system can be up and ready in seconds. So the uh, pre-disaster compared to the uh, warm site costs are a little higher because you're paying for uh, not only the storage but the RAM and the CPU and bandwidth as well. Post-disaster same cost. Uh, there, there, shouldn't, uh, there can be no difference in that pre and post cost so it, for budgetary purposes, uh, some people like it because there is no uh, adjustment in that uh, cost for that month. Some uh, technologies that we use for hot site recovery. Uh, VMware, and this is an extension very much of uh, the vSphere 5.1 replication, uh, is they in include a uh, site recovery manager includes a layer of application that does the process and procedure for the recovery. So uh, the networking aspect, uh, the, um, the, firewall, or the, uh, the firewall as well as the virtual machine itself um, is a 
uh, available and live, and uh, the recovery time is very fast and, and automated. There may be some higher level. Um, I, I believe that uh, SRM requires specific licensing and Enterprise Plus uh, license for VMware. It, is, it can be a more sophisticated setup. Recovery time, though, is very fast and it's automated. And again, we like, uh, we're obviously very big proponents of uh, VMware because it's native to our environment as well. Double take is a very, very cost effective um, hot site recovery tool, especially for one offs. So if uh, you have an environment that is maybe mixed with VMware or hardware, um, and uh, you don't need recovery for your all of your systems. You can just need for one or two. Uh, you can load the software on each of those virtual machines, have a location off-site. Uh, again, you're paying for that virtual machine to be up and running in that DR location at all times, but it's real time. Uh, as well as the, the system is automated, you have a lot of parameters that you can um, uh, can change to make that automation take place the way you want it to, but it can be very singular, one machine out of 200 um, instead of uh, all of them. And it, the uh, replication and restore is very quick, and then back again to your primary site if you need to. Zerto is a, uh, it's a relatively new product that's out on the market. Um, uh, we're very big fans of it. Uh, it is a hypervisor-based replication, so it takes not storage-based replication. Uh, it's not necessarily VMware, Zen, or anything else. It is uh, uh, agnostic to that environment. The, um, it can also support very singular uh, virtual machine uh, DR scenarios, so it doesn't have to be the entire system. It can be one one-offs of certain systems. It has a very fast recovery time, as all the hot site um, tools do. It's automated recovery. Uh, one aspect that is a little bit different about the Zerto deployment is that it does not require uh, CPU and RAM allocation to the uh, DR environment. So you can save costs on not actually having that CPU and RAM running because it's a hypervisor based. It's not a uh, virtual machine based. Uh, or system-based for that matter, uh, we can uh, take an, uh, it's an image stored in uh, our uh, SAN infrastructure that is triggered and when it's triggered it automatically applies RAM and CPU resources at the time of a recovery event. So it is very cost effective, uh, maybe more so than some of the other uh, technologies, but it's, it's also a little bit more, I don't want to say bleeding edge, but it's leading edge, it's a little bit newer. Uh, I thought we'd just walk through a quick use case of uh, one of our clients' um, DR challenge that they were faced with. Uh, I'll, I'll keep it anonymous to protect the innocent, but I'll give you a good idea of what that uh, type of, what their environment was and, and why they needed to deploy additional DR strategies. Client Profile. Uh, it's a New Jersey-based company that provides performance management analytics to the healthcare industry. The client problem. They have uh, over 400 clients that needed 100% availability to that data set, to their uh, uh, analytic dashboards. They provide real-time operation and financial information uh, to the organization at a very high level. Uh, and that data was used to uh, make purchasing decisions, uh, management decisions, uh, and they, it, it was a dashboard that they needed at all times. Their primary location, uh, customer-facing software, was in their New Jer Jersey headquarters. The secondar secondary DR site uh, was a co-location facility also located in New Jersey. Um, the co-location site required double the hardware capex, so whatever they bought for the primary systems, they essentially had to buy for their secondary DR systems, uh, and they had an OPEX related to those co-location services. Hurricane Sandy came in and pretty much knocked everything out. Both primary and secondary, they lost uh, access to both systems uh, for a long extended period of time, and it was very, very painful. So when Greenhouse Data uh, engaged 
uh, this company, we did, uh, and this is a very high level example of the analysis that we did, uh, but we found that the requirements for their mission critical customer facing systems uh, were less than 15 minutes RTO and RPO. So we, we had to have them back up and running within 15 minutes at the most, and we couldn't lose any more than 15 minutes of, uh, of the data. They had about six applications running on 20 servers to support that environment. The requirements for their business critical operations, uh, it was a um, much broader recovery time when we really dug in and looked at, so if, for instance, your SharePoint is down for a day, you know, are you going out of business? The answer is no. Uh, so we identified, you know, some of these non-mission uh, critical systems, uh, very important business systems, but it was not going to put them out of business if they uh, went down. They had about seven applications running out again on about 20 servers to support uh, their office system. The technology infrastructure, VMware vSphere 5.1, which we like because uh, that helps with a, a lot of decisions. They had a nice sized bandwidth pipe, 40 megabits per second uh, at their primary location. And they had about 20 terabytes of data storage in total, both uh, for mission critical and business critical operations. The greenhouse data solution, so uh, when we engaged them, we separated, for the most part, we separated mission critical and business critical systems. Uh, for the mission critical, we created a private cloud supporting SRM replication uh, and recovery, so a hot site recovery system for their mission critical. Uh, at, at current standing, it's about an eight minute RPO and RTO, so well under that 15 minute parameter. And it supports the full 20 terabytes of data storage, so both their mission critical systems that are customer facing and their business uh, critical systems that were internal data. Um, so it supported that entire data set in uh, the storage infrastructure. On the business critical systems, we integrated a public infrastructure as a service cloud, so a warm site recovery environment for them. Uh, the cost related to that warm site recovery is essentially zero. And we can still maintain a, uh, anywhere from a one to four hour RPO and RTO. So again, well below what their expectations were. The ROI is very interesting, uh, and this is a soft ROI because we did not include costs such as network connectivity from the primary location to the secondary location. The 36-month 30 month, uh, OPEX co-location services for the original co-location deployment were like $180,000, something five grand a month uh, for power, bandwidth, uh, and capacity. And then they had a CapEx equipment cost somewhere around $120,000 during that three-year cycle. In the greenhouse data uh, deployment, the 36-month OPEX private cloud deployment was only about 126,000. Uh, currently, the 36-month OPEX for the public cloud deployment to support their warm site is zero. Uh, the cost for the data stored is included in the 36-month uh, the, uh, CapEx uh, for the private cloud. The 36-month 30, uh, CapEx on equipment is zero. They don't need to buy any more equipment at all. The savings over 36 months, uh, about 174000 And very quickly, I think I only have about a minute here uh, or so, I wanted to give you a, a quick idea of uh, what a virtual data center looks like. So just bear with me one second. And your screen should change here to a login page. And again, a virtual data center uh, is a web page access to an environment where you can deploy infrastructure on the fly. And so I'll go ahead and log into our cloud platform in mid-US. And you can see we have several systems running here, uh, both Microsoft and Linux. Uh, we have a DR template here uh, that is this could be a standard deployment of one of your servers. It is just a, it's the OS. It is the, um, uh, the basic framework for the system. It may have some application framework on it as well. And all I need to do is hit start. And that server will start up. I'll then need to uh, access the server itself, load the data. The data time may take, uh, depending on the size of it, um, uh, may take you know, an hour or two or longer. But 
I have that framework there. I can load the data. I can be back up and running uh, within hours in a warm site uh, type of scenario. And the cost is essentially uh, minuscule until I actually have that event and have to apply you know, CPU, RAM, and bandwidth costs to that environment. I think I'm just about out of time. Uh, I would like to thank everybody for attending today. And please feel free to follow up with uh, any questions uh, with uh, Wendy. And uh, we look, for, look forward to talking to you in the future. Thank you very much.